New York City has been a focal point for hotel development in the United States during the most recent real estate cycles. Over the past 25 years, more than 33,000 hotel rooms have been added to Manhattan's core markets. Many have compared this to the hotel boom during the 1920s. And when you look back at that time frame, more than 34,000 rooms opened in a mere 13 year period. The other point to consider is the fact that more than 9,000 hotel rooms have been removed from inventory in the past 25 years. Many prominent hotels have been converted to residential or office use, while others have been demolished to make way for new developments. If you look at the Manhattan lodging market's expansion over the past century, it has largely evolved by neighborhood. At the beginning of the 20th century, the epicenter of Manhattan's hotel market was the Madison Square neighborhood, which has gained a hipper nickname more recently as Nomad. Madison Square was home to many of the most luxurious hotels in the city, including the original Waldorf Astoria. In the early 1900s, hotel development centered around Midtown Manhattan and the Upper West Side, with most of the projects built by the railroads or New York City's elite, like John Jacob Astor. In 1912, the McAlpin Hotel opened with 1,500 rooms on the north side of the Madison Square neighborhood. At the time, it was the largest hotel in the world. Then, in 1919, the Hotel Pennsylvania opened just a few blocks away, eclipsing the McAlpin with 2,200 rooms. As we entered the Roaring Twenties, many hoteliers sensed the luxury market was shifting north towards the Theater District and Central Park South. Storied hotels like the Roosevelt and Sheldon Towers opened in 1924. The Barclay, the Drake, and the Warwick opened in 1926, followed by the Abbey, the Navarro, the Park Central, and the Savoy Plaza in 1927. The Paramount and the Piccadilly near Times Square opened in 1928, and in 1929 the Hotel Lexington and the New Yorker, which took the mantle as the largest hotel in the world with 2,500 rooms. Meanwhile, with plans to develop a new facility in Midtown, the Astor family closed the original Waldorf Astoria to make way for construction of the Empire State Building. Then, as the Great Depression gripped the nation, luxury hotels that were already under construction continued to open with the St. Moritz and the Carlisle near Central Park in 1930, and the Essex House and the new Waldorf Astoria in 1931. Reeling from the impact of more than 34,000 new hotel rooms built in little over a decade, while dealing with severe economic turmoil, very little changed in the overall hotel landscape for nearly 50 years. From the Great Depression through World War II and much of the Cold War, Manhattan real estate was hard hit during the Depression and did not fully recover for almost three decades. By the late 1960s, office space construction in Manhattan took off, largely personified by the development of the Twin Towers, which opened in the Financial District in 1973. Hoteliers took note and a few notable projects entered the pipeline. New York real estate mogul Harry Helmsley built the Park Lane in 1971 and soon made plans to construct the Helmsley Palace in Midtown. In 1972, John Portman proposed the development of a 2020 room Western International Hotel in Times Square with hopes of revitalizing the area. In 1975, a young Donald Trump partnered with Hyatt on his first New York City project to redevelop the historic Commodore Hotel into the Grand Hyatt, New York. The Grand Hyatt reopened in 1980. The Helmsley Palace opened in 1981 along with Hilton International's Vista Hotel at the World Trade Center. In 1984, Ian Schrager made his foray into the hotel industry and introduced a hip boutique style with the opening of Morgan's. In 1985, John Portman finally opened his project in Times Square, the Marriott Marquis. Times Square was a dangerous place to be in the 1970s and early 1980s. Crime riddled the area as the drug epidemic took hold. In 1981, Rolling Stone magazine referred to 42nd Street and Times Square as the sleaziest block in America. However, the opening of the marquee was the first piece to cleaning up the neighborhood. Soon, other major firms like Disney invested in the resurgence of Times Square to make it one of the top attractions in the city. Following the economic slowdown in the early 1990s, 
hotel development in New York escalated. New projects cropped up in smaller submarkets and previously untested residential neighborhoods. Limited service brands sought opportunities to succeed in the strong urban setting. Hotels sprouted in the downtown area to accommodate the growing demand from Wall Street. Projects in the Garment District began to fill the gap between Times Square and Madison Square. Ritz-Carlton returned to Manhattan after more than a century with the opening of its Battery Park property in 2002. Over the next decade, more hotels in Greenwich Village, Soho, Tribeca, and the Lower East Side started to dot the landscape between Midtown and Downtown. And as all things do, Madison Square has come back into style, now under the moniker of Nomad. The Ace Hotel opened in 2010, followed by the Gansevoort in 2011, and the namesake Nomad Hotel in 2012. Now virtually all of the lifestyle brands are planting their flags in the neighborhood. The next phase of expansion in Manhattan's lodging market will be the hotel openings in Hudson Yards, which will finally provide some much-needed rooms in close proximity to the Javits Convention Center. Looking at snapshots of the hotel inventory by neighborhood illustrate the growth and shift of markets as well as the demand strongholds. As previously mentioned, Nomad was the primary hotel submarket in Manhattan in 1900. That remained through 1918, but hotel development on the north side was gaining momentum. By 1931, Midtown, Midtown East, and the Theater District and Upper West Side accounted for more than half of the city's hotel rooms. Over the next five decades, the room's inventory shifted slightly from a locational standpoint but the change in total room count was negligible, with only a couple hundred net rooms added. By 1994, the Theater District and Times Square became the dominant submarket. And over the last three real estate cycles, new hotel rooms have been added across all of the submarkets, with the exceptions of the Upper West Side and Upper East Side, where many properties have converted to residential. Looking ahead to 2021 shows a rise in available rooms across most of those same submarkets. Comparing the current profile of hotel inventory to visitation at the key attractions in each submarket shows a somewhat similar shape with the Midtown and Theater District being the primary tourist destinations. The allocation of hotel inventory compared to office space in the various neighborhoods illustrates the other piece to the demand puzzle, as most of the hotel rooms are situated near corporate demand drivers. Certainly, the volume of hotel room growth over the past several years has been extraordinary. However, looking at the big picture, the growth pace of hotel rooms since 1984 is on par with the pace of office space development, yet well below the growth rate of most other demand indicators. Even in a tighter time frame during which Manhattan added more than 33,000 hotel rooms, the trend is somewhat similar with the rate of hotel inventory expansion trailing all but office space development. As construction costs continue to rise, the average investment per room to develop a hotel in Manhattan over the past three years was nearly $600,000. However, the exorbitant cost is only modestly higher than the average price per key for acquiring hotel assets in the market. While some are concerned with the size of Manhattan's hotel pipeline, keep in mind that even with the rise of short-term rentals and the spread of hotel development to outlying communities like Brooklyn and New Jersey's Gold Coast, Manhattan remains one of the strongest hotel markets in the country with year-round occupancy consistently in the upper 80% range. Not surprisingly, this robust environment is expected to entice hotel developers for the foreseeable future.